ye of little faith. We've actually built two bogeys into our testing procedure. One is a price check. A certain number of our shoppers will require one, and they'll call us on the radio, and Jamie or I will go out and give the actual price. price. There you go. One happened right there. Uh, OK, that's three ninety nine. <laughs> the other one is the most dreaded of shopping scenarios. Bum, bum, bum. The person who pays with a bank check. This, combined with the price check, ought to make our scenario very, very realistic. There's no doubt that their superstore is super real. And halfway through, there's already a deluge of data. Price check on two. Uh, Roger that, Mr. Heinemann, price check on two. But because Adam's so excited about this store story... How much is this apple, sir? Uh, 99 cents. Uh, thank you. He's volunteering to not just observe, but to participate, too. Got my card, got my timestamp. Now it's time to go shopping. He's been randomly allocated six items. Grits, yep. Which he selects based on taste. Lab-grade gravy. Delicious. And packaging. I only buy these because the label features the handsomest man I've ever seen. Then, like all the other shoppers, he chooses a cue and notes down the time. 2436. 24. 36. And that's when the boring part, the waiting, begins. No magazines to read. I need to know about what's going on with the Kardashians. This is the only place in the world I can find that out. Three minutes, 18 seconds after joining the queue, Adam finally reaches the register. 2754. 2754. Thank you. All right. Here, I'm buying that banana peel. But how will that time compare to his fellow shoppers who continue to collect their data with destiny until, luckily for them, time's up? Well, after a couple of hiccups, we have completed test number one of our line waiting test. Thank you very much. I'm very happy with how it went. In fact, I even participated as a customer during this run, and it felt like a very authentic shopping experience, which is what we want. Next up, set up the serpentine. Piece of me. In the Mythbusters volunteer special, the guys have shown that axe does trump gun. That was the hardest thing I've done in a long time. <sighs> but fans also want to know if its gasoline-powered bigger brother is even better. And for that, Adam's taking a pit stop at the shop. While we've been playing around with guns and axes, I have to say I feel we have neglected perhaps the most spectacular of zombie killing tools. And no zombie apocalypse would be complete without it. The humble chainsaw. Although the axe was awesome. Oh, I love the smell of old tools. Viewers want to know if the iconic chainsaw is really a zombie's ultimate enemy. Ha! Ha ha! I win. To find out, first, Adam must calibrate his weapon so that it can reliably register a kill. And for that, he's switching things up. When I take a chainsaw, run, 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 and I touch a zombie, there's a certain length of time I touch him for before I've cut through his skull and his cranium. I'm guessing three quarters of a second. So what I've done is I've set a switch into this chainsaw that will start a timer going that will go beep every time I've killed a zombie. And this is the switch. It's a little bit of a UHMW guide, a micro switch, and when I touch a zombie, oh, it clicks the switch. Hear that? Adam's timer switch will ensure that he can't kill zombies unrealistically fast. Wounded zombie, dead zombie. That's how this is gonna work. But so as to not really harm our volunteers, he's also swapping out the blade for something significantly less sharp. I've got to kill zombies without hurting them. Next comes the predictable paint job. Before one last addition, a blood spatter system to crank the realism to the max. Everyone knows zombie blood isn't red. It's a family show. <laughs> 